I'm sitting in the barn at Perch Hill and um, I teach here through quite a lot of the year and I teach various things but my main kind of absolute heart territory for me is about cut flowers and what we do here and have done over the years is, is moving from understanding that perennials um, are very different in their productive profile from annuals and dahlias, tender tubers. And so when I started, the seed catalogues used to have, I mean, two or three cosmos in or whatever, two or three marigolds, um, two or three scabies, etc. And we'll talk more about all of those later in the course. But there was really quite a limited range. And, um, and similarly of dahlias, there was a limited range. And so what I wanted to understand is what it was about these that was making them so productive and then finding many, many, many more things that had the same productive profile. And I guess that's what I've kind of spent the last 30 years doing really, is extending from two cosmos to certainly 30 or 40 cosmos varieties, let alone zinnias, antirhinums, which are snapdragons, calendulas, which are marigolds, which you'll see through the year. And that's the great thing is we'll, I'll show you each of these things, how to sow them, how to grow them, how to plant them out, how to then pick them, what to arrange them with, about color, about all that, which are all the stuff that I've learned over the last 30 years. And similarly with the dahlias, one of the things that I really love and that we do a lot of here is trialing. And we trial maybe 60 or 70 new varieties of daily here every year. And some of them will be new to us. So I'll go to Holland and um, I'll select ones that I think look particularly interesting. Some existing and some we actually breed ourselves or we work with breeders to breed. And so we'll talk a lot more about that later in the course. But um, it's the thing, I, I just absolutely love it because it's like I'm walking into a sweetie shop and I'm saying, let's cross this one with this one and see if we get something even better, which is this one. Um, and it's, it's just the most incredibly creative and exciting thing. And the other thing that I love doing is putting together different easy to grow plants one with another. Um, and so making collections of whether it be annuals or dahlias or whatever, and having this garden, which is an acre and a half, um, we're on heavy clay, uh, we're on the side of a hill, we're in East Sussex, in the Sussex Weald. It's, it's one of the highest points of the Sussex Weald here. And, um, and just being able to walk out, I get up very early in the morning, um, and just in my hand, as things are coming out, season by season, just putting together new combinations is, is the thing that, that kind of floats my life, really. I, I completely love it. And none of it is difficult to do. None of the growing is difficult. It's just all about simple abundance, color, flower, scent, and having it from outside and bringing it inside. And that's the foundation stone of this whole place and what we do here. For me, cut flowers is just, it's such an odd thing. It's so emotional for me. And I think it's probably that I spent my, a lot of my childhood with my dad, who then died when I was 17. Um, he, was, he was 50 when I was born, um, so he was quite an elderly dad. And he actually retired when I was five. And then off we would go in his mini clubman every weekend to incredible wildflower sites. So as soon as spring had started in March or April, depending on the year, and actually, of course, because I'm, you know, in my early 60s, um, 
it was much colder in my childhood. So often spring would be April actually. Um, but we would head off and we would see amazing sights like the snake's head fritillaries in, in Magdalen Meadows, or we would go to the Outer Hebrides in the summer holidays where you would see incredible orchids next to harebells, next to yellow rattle, um, and just beautiful, beautiful flowers. And um, so I think for me, the whole bringing flowers from the outside to the inside is just, it's such a life force for me. And I, I kind of want it to be for all of you if it isn't already. And if it is already, but you want to know more about it, then I really hope that this is gonna be the place that you'll learn that. And I suppose that's kind of um, another real life force for me now is teaching. And do you know, I never ever would have thought that I would enjoy teaching because I'm incredibly impatient. And my family would say that, that I am the most impatient person. So you would think that would make a really rubbish teacher. But there's something about the medicine crossed with the creativity that I just find, if I find something out that is like, wow, that's really interesting. I don't want to just keep it for myself. I want to tell everybody about it. And um, I guess it's like if you're a foodie, which I am a bit too, actually, but you know, if you find a wonderful new ingredient or a wonderful new restaurant, you want everyone to know about it. Um, anyway, I, really, I just, I love teaching because I love the fact that here we experiment and trial and trial new plants, but also new techniques. And we're doing that all the time with Josie here, Lewis, the head gardener. She loves the science too. And, and then we just love to teach and write about it. And um, it's, it's just, it's really exciting. And then when I'm teaching a group of people and I see all you guys and I just see a spark in someone's eye or they come up to it and ask me a question and you can tell that they've not really gardened before, but that they've suddenly kind of thought, wow, this is this whole new thing that is going to make my life happier, jollier, more colorful, more scented, more flowery. Um, that's just so nice, I love it. So in this course, I really want to try and combine a bit of science, um, you know, that is who I am um, and that's in my background. And I really think it's incredibly important to understand why something works and why it doesn't work. And then you don't need to learn it, you just know it. It just becomes second nature. And so I'm gonna show you lots of techniques that I know work. Um, quite a lot of them you won't kind of see elsewhere. Like we do a lot of sewing into gutter pipes here and I'm gonna explain why. Uh, it's basically about not having root disturbance, but it's also about time saving. Um, but so I really want to go into, into how to save time, how to do things easily, but they've got to be successful and explain the science of how things succeed. But I also, with me, it's got to be creative. Um, and I'm gonna show you my favorite plants, my favorite varieties of plants, my favorite color combinations. And for me, my, I, I've always, from being a young child, been drawn towards colour. Um, like I'd be walking through the city centre where I was brought up and there would be an art shop and I would just be drawn to the window with boxes of crayons. And you'll see later on my desk, I have lots of boxes of crayons. But um, so, so uh, and, and how, so you can't have just a kind of willy-nilly, licorice all sort, chaotic, color for it to be beautiful, I think, and to be calm and stylish. And so I'm very much going to teach you about how you put together color, which in my view, um, to a beautiful end. Um, and texture of flowers and scents and scales and shapes, all that um, we'll cover in a lot of detail. If you're a beginner and you've never done it before, I promise I'm going to not use loads of jargon. And if I do, I'm going to explain the jargon. So it will be completely easy to understand and digest and act on and get out there and do it. But also if you're a more seasoned gardener and you've been doing it for a while, maybe you've been growing perennials and shrubs, but actually maybe not so much the cut and come again stuff. We'll go, we'll talk more about cut and come again. Um, 
there's definitely going to be lots. And in a way, I would love you to just park your previous gardening knowledge in a way at the door um, and come with me because this is a slightly different way of looking at gardening, much more like vegetable productive gardening than mixed border gardening. Um, and if you are somebody who's been growing cut flowers for ages, I will also include lots of new stuff because we're always doing trials here. So every year we find new results and, um, you know, it's we've been trialing lots of different composts, how to make your own compost, all that kind of stuff. It'll all, it'll all be included. So good new sowing techniques that are very successful, that save time, things that are more sustainable that, you know, we all have to be aware of, all that will be included. And then finally, the two things which once you've grown it well, um, you've then got to pick it well. So picking and conditioning. And I've learned more over the last 30 years um, about how to make flowers last and maybe almost anyone because I hate things dying if I've put the effort into growing them. And, and finally, what to pick to go with what. And I'm going to give you really simple tips that I promise you, even if you're not creative at all and you just think you've got a terrible eye and you really don't know how to do a flower arrangement, from really simple things to something, you know, slightly more party-ish, I'm going to show you exactly recipes that will give you guaranteed exactly as I show you. So just like Mary Berry with her classic sponge, I'm going to show you that you will get a wonderful vase of flowers if you follow one, two, three, four with me. We're going to have our own special plot here um, that's um, just over nine meters by just over five meters. So it's, it's sort of what you can fit in an average garden, I guess. But absolutely, if you have a bigger garden or a smaller garden or even a window box, I'm going to tell you the things, if I had a window box, the three plants I would put for each season. So whether it's big or small, uh, we're going to cover it. And I'm going to design for the plot that we have here through the season. So um, I tend to think in four seasons, sometimes five actually, and I'm going to tell you exactly what's going in and why. Um, in each of those seasons and what gets left in and what gets taken out, what gives you the right balance of flowers and foliage, the right balance of colour. And I don't want anyone to sort of slavishly follow that. Of course they can, um, but I, I just want to enable you to make your own decisions about your favourite colours, your favourite plants within those colours, and just to give you the general broad brushstroke sort of guide of how to have the most unbelievably efficient, productive, and very beautiful cut flower patch.